Hello and welcome to a special episode of One Team in Ayrshire. This is a video where we are delighted to be joined by Mr Stephen Cree. Hello Adam, delighted to be here. Great to have you on. Finally, obviously a massive Kelly fan, but just before we get into you know talking about Kelly, could, could you just give you know our listeners a bit of a, a background into yourself and your career for anyone who doesn't uh, know about you that much? My my career as a Kelly fan, or uh, my or career as a your <laughs> career as a <laughs> as an actor. Yeah, uh, yeah, I am, and also actually, if anyone can hear any kind of bangs in the background, it's fireworks. Uh, it's nothing that I'm, nothing dodgy that I'm doing in my house. Um, I uh, yeah, I'm an actor, and uh, I think until when I did the I did the Kelly uh, halftime draw um, earlier on this year when we were playing Hibs at home. And I think at that point when I walked onto the pitch, probably uh, 99.9% of the Kelly fans had absolutely zero idea uh, who I was, understandably apart from my mates. Um, but I think after I gave the Hibs fans the fingers at half time, uh, a few of them uh, took notice. You became legend in their eyes. And seemed to actually, funnily enough, after that, I noticed there's a Kelly, a Kelly fan site I'm on on Facebook. Um, is it Kelly FC? Uh, 1869. 69, yeah. Mm. yeah, and I noticed on that, like a couple of people had commented saying, uh, Is this guy actually a Kelly fan or is he just a glory hunter? And I thought, <laughs> I thought if I was a glory hunter, I probably would have chosen someone other than Kelly. Um, although that said, uh, I'd far rather uh, support a team like Kilmarnock anyway. Um, so, yeah, so I'm obviously probably like. The the, the 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 thing or the TV show that most people have heard of is Outlander, um, which I'm in uh, the uh, American show, but set in Scotland. And uh, but you know I've been acting for 17 years. I've done various uh, bits of TV, various films over the year. I've done the West End down in London and uh, done some Shakespeare and. Uh, and uh, I'm in Outlaw King, which is out uh, next week. Another Scottish epic uh, about Robert the Bruce. Did you manage to convert Chris Pine into a Kelly fan? Uh, unfortunately, not. He didn't actually show. I don't remember him showing any interest uh, in football whatsoever. Doesn't know um, what he's missing out on. No, I know. I know. I don't actually remember him. I don't remember even talking to him about sport. To be fair, I do know whenever I'm on anything and wherever I am in the world, and if, if it's like something where work is taking me, I always specifically tell people that I'm from Kilmarnock. Because you know, like if you're from near a city, people will start to just say, like, oh, I'm from say Glasgow, Glasgow. Yeah. or I'm from near Glasgow. I've always specifically told people that I'm from Kilmarnock. And I'm quite happy now. The one good, uh, well, not the one good thing, but one of the good things about being an outlander, it's got such a huge following yeah. on Twitter. That uh, my when I sign things hashtag KT, uh, KTID, uh, people as random as like you know Vancouver or Texas or, or whatever now realise that KTID stands for Kelly till I die. So I'm quite uh, quite proud to have been spreading that out there. Yeah, it's another reason why you know the football team being so successful has been good for the whole town because we used to say, "Oh, we're from Kilmarnock," then people would go, "Oh, is that where the scheme is filmed?" But now, uh, but now it's more like, you know, mate, that's where the football club's filmed. I gr- when I was uh, when I was seven, seven or eight, uh, we moved to Onthank, and I lived in Onthank for about eight years. And when the scheme came out, I was I've never been, uh, I've I've kind of never been more angered by a program in my life. I thought it was, I've actually done a, I remember doing an interview with, the, I think it was a Glasgow Herald uh, or something, and I was saying, like, I kind of brought it up because I was always uh, really kind of defensive of On Thank and Kilmarnock, uh, indeed, after. Did you ever see that documentary? Uh, yeah. Oh, it was a complete and utter shambles. I mean, aside from, I, I went to school with uh, Marvin, uh, one, of the, one of the stars of it, Marvin Baird. And aside from exploiting all the people on it and basically kind of giving the impression that 
on thank is some absolutely horrific place to live full of degenerates or, or you know or, or something yeah. like that it kind of gave Kilmarnock a bad name and I thought I actually just kind of gave council estates a bad name as well as if like you live in a council estate you'd inevitably go and end up becoming a heroin addict or something yeah. and actually the people that they exploited on it as well like Marvin and whoever else they weren't actually it wasn't a documentary in the sense that they were saying something intelligent it was more just some sort of you know, exploitation, uh, I think, that was there and, and, you know, for kind of some sort of strange entertainment purposes where people were laughing at the people in it. Yeah, it was like a reality show almost, but yeah, well, some you know, it was just completely unscripted, and or most of it was anyway, I couldn't tell. I think I read something about people calling it poverty porn or something like that, and yeah. uh yeah, it was just it was just totally it, it was completely ridiculous. I mean, on thank was a perfectly uh, fine place to grow up, and you could have you know they could have put the document, they could have made it on uh, anywhere, and if they'd chosen, okay, anyway, I don't want to waste any more time talking about it. But yeah, it was uh, it was for a few years, as you say, people were like, oh, the scheme. Yeah, so that you know that was what Kilmarnock was known for, but now with the. Uh you know, the, the team doing so well, it's the team sort of taking over what, you know, Kilmarnock represents and it's getting the town, you know, behind them again. So transition on to Kilmarnock, obviously that's a bit about you. So how did you get into, you know, supporting uh, Kilmarnock, you know, as a youngster? So my, my dad was a Kelly fan uh, since he was a little boy. Uh, so he started taking me and my older brother as soon as, God, like, I actually can't. I can't remember the first Kelly game I ever saw, and I can't remember exactly what age I was. But I was, I was certainly young, and uh, you know, I don't know, like five or six or something. And uh, my actually early childhood memories of the Kelly games was not really liking it. I didn't, I didn't actually really start loving football. I think until I was over ten. So I kind of always felt like I was, I was slightly dragged along. And it was back in the days when Rugby Park was uh, terraced. So I would, go and, I would go and stand around with my dad and all his friends and my big brother and start watching the game. And can you, did you, can you remember Rugby Park before it became all-seater? No, I was far too young for that. Right. Well, you, like, so we would go and stand where the east stand is now. Yeah. And then like behind the goals, which is now the uh, Chadwick stand, it was always more or less, unless it was Rangers or Celtic or something, it was always empty around there. So me and like one of my other friends, the same age as me, would just go around there and kind of swing on the, swing on the kind of, what the hell do you call them? The, the kind of things you lent against, barriers. Yeah, uh, yeah. And we would just kind of, so I actually, it took me a wee while to properly get into loving the games, but the first season I remember very clearly was when we were in the old second division. And uh, when Tommy Burns came down to us and uh, came to us as a player at first, and I've got very distinct and fond memories of travelling to like our bro, Albion Rovers, East Stirling, Stenhouse, Muir, sitting on like travelling to, there'd always be like, somebody would be driving, there'd be about four or five people packed into the back of the car. I'd be sitting on my dad's knee or someone else's knee all the boys would have a few beers and like doing absolutely horrendous farts in the car. I was about eight years old, sitting in the back, trying not to, trying not to choke. Is there any particular memory or game that stands out from you Do you know, know, when you were going as a youngster? Yeah, funnily, two two games really stand out. One uh, for for very different reasons. One was um, oh Christ, I think it was Stranraer. Uh, we went down and a fight broke out in a pub and my brother and me got shoved under a table. I think Stranraer fans like rushed a pub that the Kelly fans were in and this big fight broke out. I'm, I'm sure it was Stranraer. And, uh, and we got shoved under the table whilst all this fighting went on. And then the other game was um, we were away to... It was before we got um, demoted. 
to the uh, relegated to the demoted relegated to the second division. It was away to Cowden Beath, and basically, it was kind of like if we won six 0 we, we would almost certainly stay up. And it was Willie Waters was was uh, was back in those days. I think he scored a hat trick that day. And we ended up winning six 0 He also, had a, I'm sure, he had a goal disallowed for offside. It would have made it seven 0 So we left, and at the end of the game, we thought we'd stayed up. And Clyde were playing St Johnston, I think. Yep. And I, I think they won one 0 or they were up one 0 which was fine because that's we were going to stay up in goal difference. And then as we were on the way back to the supporters bus, we heard that they got a penalty in like the ninety third minute or something, uh, and scored. And uh, that goal was the one that sent us down to the second division. Yeah, that was a devastator, obviously. So when you were that age, what kind of fan were you? Were you just you know going to the games and that was it, or did, did you know you had the strips, you had all the the posters up in your bedroom, uh, things like that? I don't actually remember necessarily having uh, posters, but I certainly had the strip, had the scarf. I was kind of thinking earlier on while doing this. I, a really uh, strong memory I had back. You remember back then, or you won't remember actually, but uh, there was these little things that were kind of a craze back then called, uh, I think they were called hacky sacks, that were these little kind of mini balls, but it was all, almost like, it was kind of like made out of beanbag material or something. Yeah. yeah. And, and it was a little, but you know, you would practice keepy ups on it and stuff like that. Yeah. And I, I used to like on a Friday night before the Kelly games, I'd go through to my bedroom and like practice just kicking it off the bedroom wall, much to my dad's annoyance, I'm sure. And uh, I'd like in my head, I'd act out how the game was going to go the next day. Yeah. And like by, but you know, by me kicking the ball against the wall, that's how many goals uh, Kelly would score. So it would always have us winning something like 8 0 against, uh, you know, Cowden Beef or yeah. uh, whoever it was, or, or Broth or whoever it was we're playing the next day. And obviously the game would end up 0 0 or something. I think the one time it ever actually happened, we played Meadow Bank, uh, now known as Livingston. And uh, we played Meadow Bank up at the old um, Commonwealth, uh, the Commonwealth Stadium, and on a on a Tuesday and Wednesday night, we won eight one, I think. So that was uh, the only time my prediction came true. Did you ever, when you were a kid, you know, did you, did you dream about playing for Kelly, or did you know that you know you weren't that great at football and it was never you know going to happen? Who told you I wasn't that great at football? <laughs> it's a bit harsh. It was Nah, do you know what? I knew I knew I was never. I played for my. I played for On Thank Primary, and um, I played at left back, and uh, left back in the changing room, as the saying goes. But no, I did play, and I, I was okay. But I was never like I, I never had any illusions that I would make it as a professional footballer. Yeah. I think like all we boys, you know, loved football, but um, not all we boys. Like a lot of we boys, I loved football and probably thought it'd be great to play for the team but I never actually thought I would I did though when I was in primary uh, 7 when I was 11 years old um, our team got to the Ayrshire Schools uh, Cup Final and we played at Rugby Park I think we played against Annan Hill if I remember correctly and I'd been in the team basically all season and the bloody manager like a week before that or two weeks before that I had tonsillitis and so I couldn't play, but there was a game we were playing like a few days before the final. And uh, so I went along to watch the game because I was feeling a bit better by then. And the manager of the team at that point was like, if you're if you're well enough to watch the game, you should have been well enough to play. So he then dropped me for the final at Rugby Park. But uh, I got brought on for the last half hour. And uh, I think my first contribution to the game was uh, a fairly cynical foul on someone that then led to Annan Hill's second and winning goal. So <laughs> it wasn't a it wasn't a particularly memorable experience at Rugby Park for me. Yeah, sounds it. When you were in school, was it the, the same kind of case that is now? When being a Kelly fan, you were kind of in the the minority among your friends. I mean, funnily enough, yes. Like even though 
I lived in Kilmarnock. And this is a strange thing. And probably this is, I, I imagine this is very uh, similar in towns like Motherwell, Hamilton, you know, places in Lanarkshire or Ayrshire or anywhere within a kind of like, you know, 30 or 40 mile radius of Glasgow. Like most, half the kids are Rangers or Celtic fans. You know, and strangely, uh, being a Kelly fan was never uh, was never as cool. But I always, I kind of, I you know, as, as long as I can remember, I always preferred that. And I, I, I don't remember ever once wishing for a second that I supported Rangers or Celtic. And as I always like, you know, as I say to Rangers or Celtic fans now, this mentality of like expecting to win yeah. all the time is just. It's not one that I'm familiar with, and also it makes it like the a Rangers or Celtic fan will never understand how incredible it is to beat Celtic in the final. Well, obviously Rangers, I'm sure would love beating Celtic in the final of the cup, but you know when we beat them in 2012 yeah. in the League Cup final with like a you know a goal in the last 10 minutes for a Kilmarnock fan, that's just the stuff of absolute dreams, and and even like beating Celtic a few weeks ago as well. Those games are still. We don't. We don't really go into those games expecting to win. I mean, maybe, maybe a bit. You know, there's been. There's always a lot more belief under Steve Clark, but it's. Um, you know, victories like that and successes like that are all the. All the more enjoyable when you're a, a you know a fan of a team like Kilmarnock. Yeah. Is there any other? Is there any? people that you've worked with in your films or TV shows that have been, you know, Celtic and Rangers fans and you've had a bit of, you know, banter back and forth with them? Uh, actually, there's a, there's, there's a, a an outlander. Uh, quite often when I work with people, they're always Celtic fans, actually. When I did Outlaw King last year, Tony Curran is a big Celtic fan. A lot of the actors on that were, uh, were Celtic fans. Um, and, uh, but there's a driver uh, on Outlander, like when you're you get picked up in the morning and yep. uh, driven to set. I don't know why. I think they don't trust actors to turn up on time or something. And uh, there's an act, uh, there's a driver. Who I will name Davy Davy Stewart, who's a big big Celtic fan, and he's from Hamilton as well. Another classic Celtic fan. He's actually not from Glasgow. He's from Hamilton, and he doesn't support his hometown team. Yeah. And uh, he said, "Yeah, I have a lot of banter with Davy. But sometimes, I mean, it never gets particularly, uh, you know, heated. But it's close to the bone sometimes." Yeah. Uh, did you have a favourite player growing up? I mean, look, I, I obviously I loved like. Uh, most Kelly fans uh, of that age, uh, of that era, uh, I loved uh, Tommy Burns. It was amazing when he came to the club. I mean, I was I was a wee boy, so I, I didn't know the history of Tommy Burns at that point. But I was still aware that you know we got an absolutely brilliant player from Celtic coming to join us in the second division. Um, I used to love Tam Black for some reason. Do you, do you remember Tam Black? Is I've heard the name. Not uh, he was he was a, he was a left back. With a big moustache, it was a uh, you know, a kind of like Bobby Connor moustache. Who also, I think they played in the same team at one point. Actually, uh, two of the best moustaches uh, in the, in Scottish football. And uh, Tam Black had a great left foot as well. Scored a couple of absolutely cracking free kicks for us in his time. And uh, I was also a big fan of Dragajee Lekovic at that point. Yeah. Back then, I think also. There was something about he just he, you know he was a cracking keeper and he, he came across as a really nice guy. But I think also we didn't have that many foreign players back then. Also, so having a you know having a foreign keeper was quite exotic. Yeah. So obviously, when you you know your childhood's gone, you were going to games you know every week, mm -hmm. uh, and then you know you slowly slowly started to get into the acting scene. Was it difficult then to keep up? You know, going every week and being able to do that kind of thing. Well, funnily enough, actually, what became difficult the first year, because I used to just go, my dad just my dad just took me every week and we'd go to, I mean, back then we went to pretty much every home and away game. Yeah. And then I think it was the 
It was either the first or the second year we got promoted. And I actually got a season ticket for the first time, uh, which coincided with getting a Saturday job for the first time as well. Uh, uh, if anyone from Kilmarnock is listening at the old uh, Burns, Burns Nursery Garden Centre, it used to be up the top of the Glasgow Road. And uh, it was, I know, I, I think I had done a, I'd done a couple of shifts that my brother used to do. The, my brother worked at Kilmarnock for a while in the turnstiles. And I'd managed to get a couple of Saturdays on the turnstiles, but I think it was a combination of they already had enough people and the money wasn't quite as good as it was at the garden centre, which in 1995 was actually fairly horrendous at the garden centre as well. I think I got about five quid a day or something. Uh, But, you know, 15 or 16, that was good money. Um, And so I ended up missing a lot of the, I ended up, you know, working at this garden centre and missing a lot of games on the, uh, on the Saturday, which was a bit of an arse. Uh, But then certainly when I was, um, when I then went to drama school, it was a bit easier because I got a job in a, uh, I got a job in a bar at night instead. So I was actually free again for the, uh, for the games. But then I moved to London when I was 21. And so the last 17 years I've I've been down in London, it's been very much a case of just uh, trying to get to as many games whenever I can when I'm back home in Scotland. And, uh, you know, so I'm well aware sometimes that when I'm, you know, it's difficult to completely comment on, you know, how we've been playing or, uh, you know, because I'm, 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 I'm kind of conscious of like not being one of those fans who, you know, actually at every single game. Yeah. So how can you really comment on, but I mean, I've, I've, I follow the game. I mean, I, I watch as many live games as I can when they're on TV. I do go up the roads quite a lot as well, so I still do get to see them a fair bit, and I'm very, um, you know, I, I follow them as, as avidly as ever, um, if not more so, strangely, the kind of, like, you know, the longer you, you'll maybe know that yourself, being away right now as well, but the longer you are away from home, I think the more uh, attached and kind of, the stronger you feel for it, strangely. Yeah, definitely. Uh, is there any? Have you managed to ever convert any of your your friends or your co-workers to to being a Kelly fan or following the team? Uh, unfortunately, I don't think so. Actually, I remember working with David Hasselhoff a few years ago, and he just recently bloody been like parading around with a Partick Thistle uh, strip. Uh, for some reason, so he then went. Uh, he went. He went immediately. Uh, turn colours and get into get into Kelly instead. I mean, I've certainly. I, th- I think I've at least maybe converted uh, some Outlander fans in Japan or South America or uh, other far flung places around the globe to to following or supporting Kelly now. So uh, that's something at least. Yeah. Uh, so obviously. It is difficult for you to get to games, but what tell us about some of the you know the biggest games that you've been to since you moved away? You know the cup finals, things like that. Uh, yeah. What ones have you managed to make? I was still, um, I was still, uh, I was still in Scotland when I went to the Scottish Cup final in 1997. Were you born in 1997, Adam? Not quite. No, still not. Jesus, just, well, an, well, just an idea. Where, where were you born? 99. Bloody hell. So, 1997, when we beat Falkirk 1-0 in the final, playing against our former manager as well, Alec Totten. So, you know, that kind of classic scenario that football throws up. Yeah. Where strange, you know, strange things like that just happen all the time. Things that it's meant to be. And uh, we had a fairly straightforward run, you know, uh, although we beat um, Dundee United in the s- semis, if I remember correctly. I've, I've possibly got that wrong, but I'm pretty sure we did. Uh, but aside from that, we didn't have the, uh, you know, Falkirk beat Celtic in their semi, I remember. And um, it was at uh, Ibrox. It wasn't at Hamden. And that was, uh, yeah, I mean, that was just, you know, 
incredible. Yeah. I, I, thought, I can't remember the game that well apart from I remember us scoring and then I think we were fairly under the cosh. I don't think we played... Um, I don't think we played particularly well. Was it... Well, I can't remember who scored. Was it Paul Wright, I think? I mean, we had such a, we had such a brilliant team back then as well. Yeah. And uh, I, I think like that team alongside the team we've got right now are probably the best... The best Kelly teams I've ever, um, you know, I've ever seen in my time. You know, maybe possibly Mixus first seen as well when we had Eremenko. Yeah, mm-hmm. the first time round that was an, you know, we played. Actually, the football we played that season was incredible. And uh, yeah, so the Scottish Cup final is etched in my memory and also etched on my face because I got so uh, incredibly drunk that night. I was seventeen as well, so I was underage. So I definitely don't recommend. Uh, doing that at home but um, you know the legal age for drinking in Kilmarnock at that point probably should have been lowered to about 13 yeah Uh, I uh, yeah so I got very very drunk and on the way back home from Expo which was the club of choice back then in Kilmarnock when I was 17 for some strange reason a van well this wasn't strange actually but a van had stopped at traffic lights and for some strange reason my friend Martin Drennan and I decided to climb on the back of the van unbeknownst to the driver and then the van took off and was driving up the Glasgow roads and I think we must have realised that it was getting close to going onto the motorway or something so we should jump off so I'm guessing maybe it was doing about 30 miles per hour and uh, we jumped off the back of the van and um, the next thing I knew, uh, I woke up covered in blood and my head had hit off the curb or hit off the road and I'd ripped my finger open off the van as well. So um, an ambulance got called and I got taken to hospital and got 17 stitches into my head just above my left eyebrow. And then at the hospital, they told me they were fortunately going to be able to save my finger. And I was like, what do you mean, save it? And the doctor was like, you've ripped the whole thing open. And I looked down in the tendons and you could see the bone and everything sticking out of my bloody finger. And uh, they stitched that back up. And so, actually, it's, I, I, I've never, I, it's fine now, but I can't really feel it on the outside. It's kind of like permanent pins and needles or something. Yeah. And uh, the scar in my head, actually, remarkably, you can hardly see anymore. It's actually incredible that's all I ended up with because it was uh, an incredibly stupid thing uh, to do. So, you know, aside from that's actually, strangely, that's almost my abiding memory (laughs) of the the Scottish Cup final. But it didn't ruin it for me. Ruined it for my mum, maybe, but not for me. That was one of those things where, like, oh, you know, make this worth it. Uh, I mean, well, in height. In hindsight, I mean, I have to say, it like, if you'd seen my face at the time, even my brother, who wasn't, you know, huge on sympathy for me, uh, could barely look at me. My face was so uh, mashed up. It's, uh, I'm very, I'm very, 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 very lucky uh, that that's all that happened. Put it that way. Yeah. And uh, you know, obviously, the other, the other cup final success was um, unfortunate. I made the most stupid one of the. Ah, well, certainly the most stupid decision I've ever made as a Kelly fan. I was filming something in Budapest, I think, the weekend of the League Cup final. Yeah. And I didn't think I was going to get back in time for it. My brother was like, do you want me to get you a ticket? And I was like, look, I don't think I'm going to get back in time. So if I do get back, I'll, I'll just watch it on TV on the Sunday. Um, you know, stupidly... I guess, maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe I thought, uh, I remember like I'd been at the League Cup final against Hibs a few seasons previously when we got humped 5-1, yeah. mm-hmm. and uh, I think maybe there was a part of me that thought, oh, well, we're not going to beat Celtic anyway, and it's going to be too tight for me to get back, so stupidly, I did actually get back in time, and I could have made it to the game, so I ended up watching it in my living room. And uh, it was a season Lennon as well. Lennon was going on about Celtic are, you know, obviously yeah, going to win the treble. treble. Yeah. It's going to be easy. And uh, lo and behold, we won 1-0. And uh, my brother actually and all my mates tell me that, because they, when we won the Scottish Cup final, the atmosphere in Kilmarnock that night was 
are absolutely incredible. I mean, the whole town up John Finney Street, everywhere, it was just teeming with Kilmarnock fans and Kilmarnock colours. I, I know that when we won the League Cup final, it wasn't the town wasn't quite like that, but my brother tells me the game itself, obviously, and the atmosphere afterwards was even better because it was Celtic would be, you know, in the manner in which we won. And I remember the game being over and just sitting in my living room and thinking, this is... This is absolutely devastating. I've got no one. To, I've got no one to. I actually, fun enough, I watched it with two Aberdeen fans, <laughs> um, and uh, but I had no one to celebrate it with, and it was a bit too late to get to Scotland by then. So, but uh, it, nonetheless, an amazing game and an amazing victory. Yeah, so that that more or less brings us on to you know present day, present times. Uh, but just for that, obviously we had some we had some bad years before that. You know the 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 Gary Locke, the Alan Johnson. Did you find yourself consciously saying, "I'm not going to come to as many games because you know we're playing so badly," or was it just the case you know you wanted to come down for as many as you could? Oh, no, no, not at all. I still like whenever I was back in Scotland, I would still get to any of the games I could. I mean, it's like as the <laughs> As the KTID thing goes, you know, Kelly till I die, and you are just a, you know, when you support a team like Kamalak, when you're going through those spells, you're just an eternal uh, optimist. Yeah. Strangely, you know, in the sense that you always think, well, maybe, you know, maybe this game things will turn around, or, uh, you know, probably, probably not having the chance to go every week as well made me want to go more mm-hmm. uh, I was there. But yeah, I mean, my God, like, it didn't make for particularly pretty viewing uh, back then. I mean, under Gary Locke uh, in particular, uh, as I remember the games I saw, Alan Johnston was always a funny one because he'd done so well um, before he came to us. At, um, uh, was it Dunfermline? I thought he was at Queen of South. Or did he go to Queen of South after us? Well, who, no, 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 no. Well, who, well, whoever it was, anyway, done you know really well. And obviously, he used to be a Kelly player, and he was always quite a silky, uh, skillful player as well. But no. just never got, just never got going. And we had, uh, yeah, quite a few seasons in a row there where we were pretty, uh, pretty pish. Uh, it's it's fair to say. Yeah. Uh, so on to the present day, Steve Clark, obviously. If you just if you could describe them in three words, what would those words be? Oof. Uh, inspirational. Uh, hold on a minute. Struggling, sprung this on you. Inspirational, genius. Uh Dower. <laughs> that Dower, that is a very good one. Uh, an inspirational Dower genius. That's I'm going to quote that. That's quite good. Uh, so, how, how good has it been a Kelly fan right now? He actually, when I said when I earlier on this year, <laughs> he uh, I did a there was a Kelly Legends game at Rugby Park like during the closed season. Yeah. And uh, they asked if I would go up and and play. It was like Kelly Legends versus the va- the versus the fans. Yeah. And I thought I was going to be playing with, with the fans, obviously. And then I ended up playing with the actual Kelly Legends. So I was playing beside like Rob Rayleigh and Alan Mahood and Alan McLaren and Paul De Giacomo and people like that. And uh, that Biffy Clyro played in as well. Yeah, but they Ben and James couldn't play this year. Uh, actually, fun. I know Ben and James quite well. We all used to drink in the Paris match when we were teenagers, so yeah. we all knew each other growing up. Well, I know Ben a bit better than James, and um, the. Uh, the, yeah, I had, a, I had a chance at the end where really I should have squared it for Alan McLaren, but I chose to go for glory. And then uh, Steve Clark said to me at the end, you should have made the pass, son. I said, oh, well, obviously won't be getting called up for the... I think, actually, strangely enough, at 38 years old, at that stage, I had more delusions of maybe getting into the Kelly team then than I did as an 11-year-old. <laughs> but squashed. Um, so sorry. What was the what, what was the question before uh, that? How good is it being a Kelly fan right now? Oh. 
Absolutely amazing. I mean, look, today, actually today's result kind of puts it into perspective because in that way, you know, I was saying a little while ago, I think it must be boring being a Celtic fan right now because, I mean, they've, they've won seven seasons in a row with, I mean, let's be honest, no real competition. Even Ronnie Dela, is that how you pronounce it? Ronnie Dela? Uh, yeah, no, won the league with them. I think Celtic fans would arguably say he was a fairly crap manager as well. So that's how, you know, little opposition uh, they've had. But actually, as it, as it turns out, there is something quite addictive and enjoyable about consistently winning <laughs> and then starting to think that you are going to win. Yeah. You know, most of your games and I, uh, despite our absolutely horrific record against Aberdeen of recent years, I thought we would win today and, and watching the game, I watched it on BT Sports, I'm down in London and uh, I mean 60 minutes, 50, 50 minutes into the game, I just thought, Christ, this is, I, I kind of wasn't, I wasn't paying 100% attention to the screen because I thought this is just, you know, we're coasting to a 1-0 victory here. Um, Aberdeen just looked the worst Aberdeen side I've seen in years and I couldn't see I mean obviously like 1-0 you always worry they might get back into it but I just couldn't see how they were going to and my brother was at the game my brother was at the game he still goes to uh, pretty much most of the games and with about 10 minutes left I texted him and said it's going to be criminal you know if we lose two points but like you know God forbid we actually lose this game and when Broadfoot put that challenge in, I just, oh, I feel the worst and, you know, there you go. And I think like, uh, I think the Aberdeen fans or certainly the, you know, on the on the radio they were saying as well, it was daylight robbery. Yeah. And they were surprised. But look, that aside, that's, you know, that, that was uh, focusing on a, an unlucky result today. The last year since Steve Clark came in, it's just been absolutely incredible going up to the going up to the games and uh, you know being involved in the atmosphere it's like it's changed you know like the atmosphere in the towns but it's done wonders for the town as a whole not yeah. just for the club and would, sorry you know, uh, would it be fair to say that you know the transition from before Steve Clark came in to when he did you would just think say that was one of the you know the best trend, like the biggest difference in a team, in a Kelly team that you've ever seen. Oh, I like a hundred percent. Certainly, I mean, when Mixu Patelining came in, to be fair, we did actually, uh, you know, we played that that season when he got Eremenko and stuff. I remember us playing absolutely incredible football uh, that year, but it was different. I don't think we were still like. Can't remember us. I can't remember if we did that well against the old firm. When Mixer was, I think there was a game where we were playing Rangers, and they were kind of saying that, oh, you know, Kelly are playing better than the old firm, but we still got still got beat by them, if I remember correctly. Um, I mean, looking at where we were, we were relegation certainties last year before uh, Steve Clark came in, and I, I I knew that I knew that we were when I when I heard that um, Steve Clark he kind of like put his name forward for the job, I just probably like every other Kelly fan I couldn't believe that there was even a possibility that somebody of his stature uh, would come to the club I mean okay Tommy Burns ended up being a great manager but he wasn't a great he wasn't a manager when he came to us in my time and I mean maybe who was the last you know there was uh, Willie Waddle but Steve Clark has got to be up there as one of if not, you know, the best managers ever to come to Kilmarnock with a pedigree uh, he has. So I think we all, we all had high hope. His appointment just immediately changed things and brought an air of positivity into it, probably highlighted by the fact we beat Partick Thistle that weekend too now. Yep. Um, and yeah, I mean, the turnaround has just been <sighs> absolutely staggering. I don't think anyone could believe it last year. You know, the, the pundits alike... And now today, I know this is like before the Aberdeen game, one of the pundits was saying, like, you can't be surprised anymore by how well Kilmarnock are doing. This is, this is what Kilmarnock are doing now. You know, 
Steve Clark's got them well drilled and you know they're a really good team capable of of getting great results and that's exactly true. I mean, okay, there's no that was un- it's football. You're gonna you're gonna lose sometimes, and sometimes you're gonna lose games like that where you deserve to you deserve to win. You know, maybe maybe there's been games recently that you know we scraped a victory as well, but um, we're still fourth top, and you know until today probably uh, what was it was it last weekend. If you'd taken the results from the beginning of this calendar year up to then, we were top of the league. Yeah, yeah I think so. Yeah. Like when you mention, you know, Gary Locke and Alan Johnson and how we were doing before, it's just absolutely, absolutely staggering. Yeah. Uh, so I'm trying to keep this in some sort of chronological order. Am I right in saying that you did the half time draw last year? Uh, now, that's what I, I was trying to think if it was this year. It was. It was last season. And it was against Hibs, and it was a game where we were two 0 down at half time, and then we came back yeah. to two all. And as as a Hibs fan said after, it was the biggest two two humping they'd ever had. I mean, we should have won about five two in the second half. Jordan Jones, that game was an absolute fire. Yeah. Scored an absolutely brilliant goal as well. Now, but I can't remember if it was this year or if it was last year. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure, but. Can you tell us a bit about your experience? Oh, I know. Do you know what? It was, it was actually, it was last, I think it was last year, because I, I think it was before we had a little girl at the, the end of last year, and I think it was before she was born. But anyway, it was certainly last season. Uh, can you tell us a bit about your, your experience of that day, you know, being a Kelly fan, getting to do that? It must have been... Oh, God, it was, it was, it was, yeah, I mean, it was absolutely... I was very proud uh, to go out and do it, and it came about because I know uh, Bill White, who's one of the one of the directors uh, at Kilmarnock, who's been a director there for a year, and is a, and I think actually, funny enough, Bill became a director not too long before Steve um, Clark was the manager, and Bill was fairly instrumental, I think, in getting Steve Clark in as well, and has done an amazing job uh, at the football club in that year, really implementing some. Uh, fantastic changes and uh, positive changes for the club, and so I think he'd, I think he'd said to somebody about you know, uh, me being an actor and stuff, and if they would want to get me on the halftime drawing, I was a bit embarrassed before I did it as well because I was you know I was jokingly saying to my brother I was like I'm going to come out here and none of the fans are going to have a bloody clue who I am, which I think is possibly true, and then I asked if I could do the crossbar challenge and I mean I'm not making excuses but I had on shoes and I didn't I didn't have a practice or anything and on my on my run up to the to the ball as I was facing the Hibs fans I decided to focus on giving the Hibs fan the double the double V's instead of actually focusing on the ball and then completely guffed my shot and hit a kind of daisy cutter that went past the post now Ben actually of Biffy Clyro claims that he made an even worse attempt than me. I don't know. I actually don't know how it could have been worse than mine. But if that is the case, I'm happy about that. But um, when I was out warming up for the Legends game uh, earlier on in the summer, I actually had another attempt and hit the crossbar twice. So, um, it was the pressure of being in front of a big crowd. I think it was the pre- I think it was. I think it was. I think it was partly the pressure. I think it was partly wearing shoes. And it was partly also giving the Hibs fans the fingers on my run-up. But the Hibs fans, to be fair to them, actually took that in great faith and, uh, you know, kind of laughed and gave me some abuse. And then as I was walking off the pitch, the Hibs fans uh, started singing the old classic after I'd hit that horrendous shot, started singing the old classic. What the... Eff- Can I swear on that? I will. What the F in hell was that? And uh, so as I was about to leave the pitch, I turned and gave them the fingers again which they all cheered, and uh, all the Kelly fans cheered as well. And I think after that, uh, having not had, a, not having had a clue who I was beforehand, uh, the Kelly fans appreciated my, my gesture. Yeah. Uh, do you have a favourite current player, or is it just like a you know you're in all of the team as a whole kind of thing? Fuck yeah, and I wouldn't want to you know I wouldn't want to uh, single. Uh, any of the the players out anyway. I think, as you say, like the team as a whole right now are just doing absolutely uh, fantastically well. I mean, it's incredible 
I, I think it's incredible when you see that the, the majority of the team is still, you know, like Steve Clark inherited. It's not like he's it's not like he's brought in loads of new players and what he's got out of the players uh, that were already there. You know, like Steve O'Donnell has just come on leaps and bounds. Greg, you know, Greg Taylor's uh, fantastic. Finlay and Broadfoot have made a great um, central uh, defensive partnership. Jamie McDonald uh, has been uh, really solid and fantastic in goals at times. Jordan Jones. I mean, if you remember, Jordan Jones... You know, was like kind of always brilliant and always skillful, but quite inconsistent before. Yeah. And uh, you know, when uh, was it Lee Clark that brought Jordan Jones in? And um, you know, he's been absolute last year. Was just phenomenal uh, under Clark. Alan Power. You know. Yeah. Uh, Gary Dicker, uh, Chris <laughs> Chris Burke this year has been on fire as well, and uh, Greg Stewart and Eamon Brophy have just been. Uh, incredible up front to the point where you know last last season's top scorer uh, can't get a game anymore. Yeah. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how the rest of the season goes now, though, because if you look at the league table, interestingly this year the kind of top eight are all it's really really tight. Like the kind of Hamilton, Dundee, St Mirren, Motherwell have all are all a little bit adrift right now, but the rest of us have all really been taking points off each other. You know, St Johnston have had a great run recently as well. So uh, it'll be interesting to see. We've got quite a tough, tough run the next few games as well. But I think that's the amazing thing about Stevie Clark as well. You kind of the fact we've just got faith and trust now that you know it's going to be all right, whatever happens. Yeah, uh, that's for sure. So I've got some questions uh, from Twitter and Facebook for you. Uh, okay. What was your f- first Kelly game that you can remember? God. First Kelly game that I can remember. I actually, to be honest, it definitely wasn't my first Kelly game, but the first one that I can, that, that I can, uh, one of the earliest ones that I can really remember was the Cowden Beef game. That one I was talking about when we won 6 0. I remember walking away from the ground, uh, and you know, and everyone just been like, I mean, for you know, to 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 have to win to be to have been crap all season and then have to score about six goals away from home. Yeah. Although Cowden Beef were relegated as well, but you know, to have to score six goals away from home is no mean feat. And so to have done that, I just remember getting on the bus and everyone being totally dejected and feeling sick that we hadn't done it. But actually going down that year ended up being a great thing for us and Tommy Burns coming to us so maybe you know maybe it was the best thing that, that happened yeah so that was from David Candlish uh, this is from Nicole what's your greatest moment as a Kelly fan um, probably a combination of uh, this winning the Scottish Cup uh, in 1997 uh, doing the half time draw <laughs> And uh, playing in the Legends game earlier on in the summer. Although I'm still, I'm still fairly gutted by. I had what could only probably be construed as an open goal chance in the first half, and I missed it. I almost had too much time. You know, the ball, the ball came to me, and it was, it was essentially just me and the keeper. And instead of just placing it. I absolutely, I tried to hammer it and it just went past the post and you know a few months on I'm still gutted about that which uh, it's funny actually because at the time afterwards in the dressing and Rab Riley who was a you know a great player for us back in the in the 80s and early 90s maybe and you know he was saying to me see it just goes to show that's like when you you know when you give the professional stick sometimes you can miss I mean the difference being I'm not a professional but uh I can't, I can't imagine missing a really easy chance of huge importance in a game. Yeah. If, if like four months on from that, I'm still pissed off about it. <laughs> Do you think you'll get another chance though? Uh, I don't know. I hope so. Maybe if like, um, maybe if Outlocking's a big success or something, and then they they want to get me back again. But uh, I hope so. 
get Chris Pine on. I thought I have to, but I play, played better in that game than I thought I was going to, so I was quite pleased with that. Yeah. Uh, so a final one from Stuart Boyd. I'm not sure whether this, this is true or not, but it's a rather strange thing to make up if it isn't. Uh, it says, ask Stephen if he remembers me making him every Saturday at the Howard Park while our dads were getting mad with it in the West West Netherton Bowling Club when we were 10 before we went to Rugby Park. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember him making me uh, as such, but uh, I do remember. Um, I seem to remember getting ice cream round at the forum instead. Well, his dad uh, and my dad and all the other dads were in the West Nelton having uh, having a few pints before the game. That was back in the days where obviously uh, the, the the drink drink driving was probably slightly different. They would sink about four or five pints before the game, go and watch the game, I think, and then all drive home. Um, but no, I don't remember. Uh, I don't remember being. Um, I don't remember being nutmegged as much. I'm not sure anyone would ever admit to that anyway. Uh, but I think that's all the questions I have. Uh, thank you very much for coming on. No problem. Uh, Absolute pleasure. Finally, have you? Uh, hopefully, we'll see you back at Rugby Park one day soon. Yeah, uh, I'll be. I'm actually aiming to go up for the uh, for the Hibs game again on the first of December at Rugby Park. I will not be back for them, but we'll hopefully meet in person at some point. Absolutely. Uh, thank you for coming on again. Uh, obviously, subscribe to your, your YouTube channel if you haven't already. Uh, on Twitter as well, at One Team in Ayrshire. You can follow Stephen on Twitter, at Mr. Stephen Cree. It's down below his photo uh, on this video. Uh, and me, at AdamL underscore 99. So, thanks, Stephen, for coming on again. Absolute pleasure. Thanks for having me on, Adam home at all uh, and we'll see you next time take care cheers mate